Hey everybody! Sonic Schoolhouse released for Windows 95 computers in November 1996, boasting content for kids age 5 through 9, grades K through 4th. Before we dive into Sonic's second ever released 3D game, we have to pick an avatar for ourselves. There are 10 choices, from the alligator, to the zebra, to the... um... hmm... <laughs> When you pick an avatar, make sure you like what they look and sound like, because you'll be hearing it all the time. <laughs> Ready? Let's go! Sonic Schoolhouse is a small, multicolored building where movement is controlled by either clicking the keypad or with the arrow keys on your keyboard. You could also borrow a joystick from your parents, but don't get caught! There are four classrooms, one for spelling, one for reading, one for addition or multiplication, and one for subtraction or division. So let's go ahead and- ugh! Hey Sonic, weren't you just, um, you know what, never mind. The classroom activities are pretty simple. There will be various problems on the blackboards which all need solving, so you just go and collect the right answer and bring it back. But look out! Watch out for Dr. Robotnik, he'll take your answers. Never let anybody cheat off of you, not even disarmingly egg-shaped adults. After you've successfully brought back an answer, the door next to the blackboard opens, behind which is more problems, because, well, that's life. But eventually, behind the doors are power-ups, which, when collected, fill in on the left side of the screen and enable you to play games in the schoolyard, go on a field trip, or just open a different door for free. The problems with this gameplay should be, um, pretty obvious, but let's say it anyway. This is an incredibly clunky way to solve problems, and on top of not being very fun, it's not a lot of learning either. There's a reason a lot of edutainment games just take the form of quizzes or normal games that ask you questions sometimes. Pen and paper is effective. Hunting down answers you already know but can't find isn't. Now, um, Sonic, can you get out of the way? I'm trying to reach that pickle behind you. Once you've slogged through one of these levels, though, you've earned the right to go on a field trip. Sonic drew the school bus all by himself, so it's only polite to ride along. By clicking on a classmate inside the school bus, you can watch informative- Oh my god, we almost rear-ended that truck! Whew. <clears throat> you can watch informative videos about the kind of animal they are. There about the quality you'd expect from a Windows 95 edutainment game. See how hard it is to see us sometimes? That's called video compression. <clears throat> there was definitely only one female voice actor available, that is, the same voice as for Sonic, and given that there are no other voice credits, I'm guessing this guy was one of the dev team. But most of us have a thumb that's opposable. That means it closes over our palm just like yours does. Just think how difficult your life would be if you didn't have a thumb. You know what? That's not bad, actually. I bet the only place you've ever seen a polar bear is in a zoo. That's probably the only place you ever will see one of us. All right, that's enough out of you. Let's listen to some of the other clips. Good day, mate. That's how we say hello where I'm from. That's Australia, in case you didn't pick up on the accent. Actually, second thought, maybe let's not do that. If you want to see all of these uncut, I've uploaded a video you can watch for free on my Patreon, but for right here, let's move on to the schoolyard games. The first game is collecting- oh my! Uh, <laughs> hey, hey again, Sonic. You really shouldn't, um, you know what? Never mind. The first game is collecting rings. The maximum difficulty is 10 rings to collect, but there are many more available. If you run into Robotnik or one of his goons, you lose all your rings. Run into them again with no rings on hand, and that's game over. Back to school with you. Collect all the rings, though, and your reward is... nothing. This is the closest that Sonic Schoolhouse comes to being a game, and it, um, doesn't really last very long. The AI is super primitive, as can be expected. Robotnik and his minions really just try to move toward you in a straight line, getting stuck on walls if there are any, and grouping up if you feel like leading them in circles. They are relentless, though, and... Does, does Robotnik's vehicle have a mouth on it? Okay, uh, I'm out. Get me out of here. Let's, let's do the next game. The second and last schoolyard game is ah! Okay. Okay. I I get it. Can I just Can I play the game, Sonic? Please. The second and last schoolyard game is matching statues. At the lowest difficulty, the pairs are arranged in lines opposite each other, and at the highest difficulty, they're all placed randomly in a circle. When you click on a question mark, the statue is is revealed. Oh. Oh no. Wait. Wait, wait. If that's... if that's Sonic here, then who's... who's that? Oh god. Oh god, no! 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 Hi everybody! Did you know you can also play Sonic Schoolhouse with a friend? 
Two people can use the keyboard, and you can both have your own animal avatars. Have fun with your friend and solve puzzles together, or compete to see who can solve the most and earn the most gumballs. <laughs> then, when you're done playing, you can print out all the gumballs you earned. But don't waste paper, and remember to recycle. You recycled! That's great! Haha! <laughs> that object had eyes! That's okay, I'm sure that doesn't have any worrying implications. More for Dr. Robotnik's recycling plan! Thanks for watching everyone, and extra special thanks to Lynn, who pledged $5 to my Patreon to make sure I read out her name! Don't worry, I'll remember you! Don't forget to check out other episodes of Nostalgia Trip, and vote for what I should do next on Patreon! Thanks again, and happy learning!